Welcome to Animation Technically, and today we're just going to be looking at a time lapse I did of my recent Charizard rig that's also gone up here at the same time, so you can uh, check that out if you want, or just see this process here if you want to see a bit more. So this model has come from Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, um, and as such it come in a very messy state. Um, there are blend shapes used for the head, which I'm going to remove, and I'm going to merge into one massive body and clean up the topology, as you can see here. So you can see the difference between how it started and how it is. It's now just one model for easy rigging. Uh, I've cleaned up the tries as well. It just makes everything cleaner, uh, so you can begin the rigging process. Now, as with most things, uh, I'm using Advanced Skeleton 5, as I mentioned in the other video. So the setup for this is a little different to, compared to normal rigs. So what you do is you make a a fit skeleton to propagate your rig to um, and you do it on the rope side of the character so I generally work my way up from the spine uh, on a side on preference so I do the torso, the neck, the tail in this case and I start to place stuff for the wings going from a front on perspective moving on to just placing everything uh, you'll notice in a minute I do actually get the wrong side so once I've propagated the wings here what I'm going to do is make sure they're all set up how I want and then I'm going to mirror them over so as with most things rigging as well, it's not the end of the world if you find out you've done it and you need to make some difference, some changes. Um, that's going to happen a few times during this process. So you'll see me adjusting things and then later on going back, adding more bones here and there, uh, making some adjustments to the parenting of the bones so things propagate how I want. With, uh, un uh, with Advanced Skeleton's fit system as well, you don't need to worry about the orientation of your bones. It makes the setup for this really simple. If you want to do something quick for a test, which this was, uh, the idea being to test the wing generation system more than anything else, the best way is to just get stuck in there. There are templates you can use, and I'm going to cover one of those soon to help you get started. Uh, probably one of the bipedal characters as well with a, a different game character. But you can see just... All you need to do is just place where you need to be. You need to make sure you have end bones as well. Without end bones, you'll have a bit of a problem. Um, just simply because it needs a bone at the end, and that will be where it cuts off its controller generation. So if you want your FK controllers to go all the way to the end, you will need to make sure you have those end bones. When we get to the tongue, you'll see I don't do that, and you'll see what that leaves you with control-wise later as well. So you always want to make sure you do that. Um, so it makes the generation based on what you give it to work with and how you tag those bones. So in the case of the feet, it's not just about doing the ankles, the toes, and then you'll end up from that. If you want to generate proper foot controls, you'll need something at the heels and something at the sides of the foot as well, parallel to each other and around the toe line. And it uses this to make its pivot system off of as well, to make sure you can have your foot roll and everything else. You can add tags to any bone as well, and on generation, it will make twist joints to go with it. Now we're moving on to the controls as it generates those. You have to fit both your S, your FK and your IK controls, which means flipping back between them. There's a mirror function and there are lots of controls on the, the UI that comes with it to help you speed this up. Uh, my, my preference is to just do a lot of this manually because while well, you can affect the scale of anything, you can see here I'm making controllers uh, bend to fit around the rig just a little better for those odd shapes that Charizard has in his body. It just makes selection a little bit easier and you want to try and describe the shape um, and the skin influence of the character with your controllers. I find this is better for animators. And one other thing I did have to add was a spline, and that was for the wing generation as well. You can see now I've gone and doubled the bones in the wings just to show off that system a little bit more. It makes everything a little bit easier, and then you can obviously see the benefit of it. It generates the uh, locators and hooks them up to the splines, and then has all those bones in the wing have orientation and look at constraints at those spline CVs. So by moving the joints, you can do that. You can see now the spline system on the chest is also there and being fit so you can see it all the, the one backwards thing about this is unlike most skeletons you'll find that you actually have to do the skinning after you've generated the rig which you might normally do the other way around especially if you have a, an rom or a range of motion file you want to load on you'd load that or retarget that onto the base rig so i've just put the, the rough skin bind in now and i'm using this to generate a, a range of motion animation and this is so i can use it to bind my skinning to when i'm painting the skin weights you can see now I'll probably start by flooding the entire skeleton on the pelvis and then I'll work my way up the spine from there through the head, down the arms, the feet and then finally the wings. It's funny how you always get set into a single process of doing these things. Obviously the 
the cleanup of the, the character hasn't quite gone perfect, so not everything is welded properly in, so I can't use loop selection and just work my way up. I occasionally have to go back and flood the ends of the parts as I'm going around. What you also won't see as well is some of my own custom tools that I've made. Most of these are just buttons plugging into Cormire functions that are buried in submenus. So I make extensive use of the hammer, copy and paste tools when I'm doing stuff and I've just put them into my own little UI that I can click uh, whenever I want. Um, I won't get into a habit of sharing my own personal tools I've written because some of them have been um, just kept over the years and I like to keep my own tools well for myself but it does speed up the process but there's nothing you're seeing here that you can't just do by going into the core Maya skinning menu uh, when you're painting the weights you've got a little box there and I can explore that for another one another little video soon but you can see here what I normally do is I roughly flood about 25% just before where the the loop that covers the bone is and I'll do 50-50 between that and then I'll work my way up and flood there and then carry on from each bit. It makes doing limbs and fingers really easily. Obviously I'm not doing anything really excessive here because I don't do muscle systems and things. This is being made with a game engine in mind so you're limited by what you can do uh, and I want to keep it simple anyway because the use case would probably be in Pokemon uh, having potentially a fair few things on screen at once doing something complex and you don't always need to um, there's plenty of squash and stretch in here with the spline IK systems that will let you do it. So you can just see the system I mentioned lets me do the tail really quickly and get a nice smooth edge to it. And then I go back with the hammer tool and just smooth up any lines I don't quite like in that curve. Onto the wings you can see, same basic thing. So I'm starting uh, by dealing with the actual bone part of the wing. And then I'm going to go back and flood each vertex around roughly where its corresponding bone is. And then I'm going to hammer in between them to get that smoothness and correlation between them in. And that will allow uh, some nice smooth movement you can see here. Simple hammering. Uh, the way I navigate in and out of the paint weights menu is probably going to be different to most people. I don't know. It's down to personal preference, really. You can work however you want. It's whatever gets the job done, really. Again, because the end game of this isn't to find the best way to rig for someone else it's the best way to make something animatable for someone else so the way you get there is purely down to personal preference whatever makes you fastest do it that way that gets you to the result you want and there you go we're finished and that's charizard and i hope you enjoyed this little breakthrough and if you want to see the end result delved into a little bit more then go and watch the other video and thanks see you next time